All right. So um, the other name for this is the hierarchical merging model. That's very jargony and technical, but if you choose to look um, more into this for a research project, you might want to know the technical term. So the idea is this, that if we kind of draw an arrow of time uh, from the early universe to today, then we start out with galaxies that are very small and not very orderly, right? Um, these are some of the low mass kind of galactic fragments. Some of them appear to have multiple cores. And that suggests that, you know, perhaps they are actually in the process of merging together. So over time, these smaller fragments clump together, um, they join, collide, and merge, and form larger and larger fragments. Um, at some point, spiral arms can get set up in some of these galaxies. Uh, we still, as we mentioned already, don't know the complete details of how spiral arms are first triggered, but the merging process itself can introduce gravitational um, changes within the disk of a spiral galaxy that causes them to merge. So it's a little bit hard to know, right, looking at these very low mass fragments, what their shape is. Um, but many astronomers think that the earliest galaxies probably did have disk shapes like spirals. All right, but some of them could have um, more, you know, just round sh um, shapes like ellipticals. And in particular, globular clusters uh, might be some of the types of like very small elliptical galaxies. Um, so small elliptical galaxies, the line between them and globular clusters is not well understood, but it could be that globular clusters, some of them formed in place. Uh, and, you know, those were outside of the main disk of the Milky Way. And so small elliptical galaxies could have formed in a similar way. So what I'm trying to say here is that even though we can't tell the shapes, some of these are very likely disc shaped, but others are elliptical shaped. All right, this particular sample of galaxies that I'm showing you in this kind of mid-range time are spirals, but that doesn't mean that all of them were spirals. The same paper that I uh, borrowed these images from also has a similar uh, redshift range examples of elliptical and irregular galaxies at this time. All right, and then the idea of hierarchical merging is that this merging process simply continues and continues until we reach the you know, present day galaxies that we see nearby. And there's ample evidence of galaxy collisions, uh, you know, just spectacular images. If you look for a, the Sloan Digital Sky Survey's survey of colliding galaxies, you'll find an entire gallery dedicated to all the cool shapes that galaxies make as they collide. Um, yeah, so for 94, to me, this does look like, well, it's kind of hard to tell. It could be two galactic cores that are in the process of merging, or it could be two galactic cores that are actually at different distances in space, right? Simply looking at the images, it's hard to tell. And we'll analyze the evidence for galaxy collisions in the second activity for today. Okay, but for now, I want to ask you, which way would redshift increase in our a uh, hierarchical merging model here. Okay, I see majority vote for A. That's right. So the farther back in time means the higher redshift. We go to infinite redshift at the beginning of the universe and redshift of zero right here, right now, um, because space, you know, we're nowhere from ourselves. Okay, there's no way, good way to say that. But the highest redshift is infinity at the beginning of the universe. So the larger the redshift, the longer the look back time. Therefore, the arrow for redshift has to point from the most recent back toward the past. Okay, so some cool stuff happens when galaxies collide. And we've talked about um, this before that when galaxies collide, the stars within them generally do not smack into each other, mainly because the size of stars is very, very, very small compared to the distance between them. But many galaxies are rich in gas. And when they collide, the gas collides. And when the gas collides, it creates higher density areas and this triggers new bouts of star formation. So galaxies where new star formation is occurring because of a collision or a merger in progress, those are called starburst galaxies. And I wonder if the candy got that name from there. It would be cool if that were true, but I don't actually know. <laughs> 